I can never get enough of Rihanna's style. The two opportunities beyond the, the, the cover shoots that we've done with Rihanna that I was able to work with her closely was the time that she performed at the Met. And then this past year, when she was a co-chair, she asked John Galliano to design a, a look, which was an homage to the Catholic Church. And she had the look that she wore on the red carpet made in three different fabrics. She had it made in cream, she had it made in gray, and she had it made in black. Each one was completely finished, completely perfect, and there was a papal tiara made to go with it. So it was obviously an homage to the Holy Father, whether the Catholic Church saw it that way, I'm not so sure. She and John worked together so closely on that very triumphant look. And I think there's a real love for fashion that Rihanna has that is, how lucky are we to be able to enjoy it? On a scale of one to 10, how important is comfort, regardless of setting? Women everywhere are asking for comfort, very understandably. I, I remember years ago, it used to be that women would wear sneakers on the subway or walking to work, and then they immediately would get into the office and go into their bags and bring out their high heels. And that obviously is no longer the case. There's sneakers everywhere. Everything on the runway is grounded today. It's grounded by a cowboy boot or a flat sandal. I mean, if you want to take it to the furthest degree, I was so thrilled when we saw the Chanel show in Paris this past October and Carl took us back to a childhood memory which was this island that he used to go to when he was apparently eight years old. We walked into the Grand Palais and he had recreated a beach and the water was rolling up uh, you know next to our front row seats and when the girls came down they were walking barefoot and to me particularly at that one moment when we had all been sitting through horror-struck the Kavanaugh hearings to see women walk with freedom and with a, with a smile at a moment when we needed it the most I thought was exceptionally uplifting. Anna, serious question, parka or no parka? Of course, parka's great. My question is what are the five basic pieces that I should definitely have in my closet? It's very important if you're a woman on the go, a woman with a bit busy job and you don't want to make too many uh, mistakes. It's great to have a basic sweater, a basic pant or a skirt, a basic coat, maybe a shoe that you just love, whether it's a sneaker or a flat or whatever it may be, but also very important to have one piece that is really fun and different and just makes you feel great about yourself. If it's within the budget is to look for an incredible piece of jewelry because to me that's the most uplifting thing a woman can own. Hey Anna, I have a black tie event coming up. What should I wear? Black tie events seem to make people terrified. And to me, what I always like to see is someone who is wearing something at night that reflects their personal style, that they're not following what they maybe mistakenly think is a rule. Don't wear a boring sequin dress or a debutante style dress just because you feel you should. I get the most pleasure and the most excitement and I think the person who's wearing it does as well when I look at a, a woman who's wearing something that I feel looks just like her. I mean, I love the way, the way that Cara Delevingne dresses, the fact that she wore a morning suit to the latest royal wedding and looked incredible with a top hat. I mean, to me, that was a pure joy to see. And she's always either in super short or a pantsuit, which is exactly what the designers are showing on the runway right now. And she always dresses for herself. I don't feel that she's ever looking out of character or out of step with who she is. So Anna, I'm wondering who is your favorite model? I couldn't possibly choose one. Too many that are fabulous. What do you think separates art and fashion and what do you think unites art and fashion? Well, there's a lot of bad art and there's a lot of bad fashion, so I would say that unites them. I think that art and fashion can come together and they can be also completely separate and fashion can be utilitarian and practical and about keeping you warm or 
do sport in or whatever it may be and that's not saying that it isn't uh, unimportant or not useful or not fashionable but maybe it doesn't need to be in a museum and then you have great designers who are thinking much more about fashion in a cultural context or a political context or in some kind of reflection of the world that we're living that is fashion on a different level. It's um, created often by hand. It's created with a statement in mind. And then I think fashion can be equally interesting and equally uh, important when it's being subversive. There's a young designer here in New York, uh, Pierre Moss, who took his audiences to the historic uh, community of Weeksville in Brooklyn, which is where freed slaves uh, were given a refuge. So that, in a way, was fashion as a political statement. But I'm not sure that that's the same as fashion as art. I think fashion as politics is very, very relevant. But fashion as art, I put in a separate category.